God's house this morning. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 To feel God's presence. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank God for feeling His presence. He's a present help in the time of trouble. Yes. And we can trust Him every step of the way this morning. Yes. Hey, if you have a copy of God's Word, won't you navigate with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4? The book of Ephesians, chapter 4. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4. We're going to look at three verses. This morning, I want to talk to you from this subject, Ingredients to Unity. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4 and deal with e Ingredients for Unity. This is a part of our Behave Like It series. We dealt with Believe Like It because it's possible. So we ought to believe that it's possible in every shape, form, or fashion. We've talked about our walk with Jesus Christ and how we ought to believe that we're saved, that God has saved us. If you've been saved, God's got a work and assignment for you to do, a life to live. Yes. And so with that understanding, we've got to move to our behavior. What are the things that God is asking us to do? We That book of Ephesians is broken down really uh, into our uh, doctrines and then into our duties. Here's our duties, our behavior. How do we carry out what we say we believe? in order for it to be possible. And I want to look at today ingredients to unity because that's what chapter 4 is about. Chapter 4, Paul is talking to the people and he wants to encourage them about unity. 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 I, uh, during the winter times, I cook a soup. Beef soup. It's a nice beef soup. According to my wife, she says it's pretty good. <laughs> I put several things in this soup, <laughs> several ingredients, mainly beef, but other things, you know, tomatoes and carrots and corn and, you know, vegetables, and, and then I put some things that make it little peppery, peppers, and, you know, things like that to make this uh, savory winter soup. But I found something that is very amazing with soup. When you mix all the ingredients in together, that after you let it cook for a while, mm -hmm. when you pull it out, put it in the bowl and taste it, it all has this one uniformed flavor. The corn is not stronger than the carrots. Neither is the onions, believe it or not, stronger than the, uh, the beef. It ends up mixing well together and you get this nice flavorful, nothing kind of weird tasting, nothing above or below. It, it all mixes in together and to make this one soup and it's, it's good. That's what unity is, church. Unity is a mixing of together. As my grandfather would say, no big eyes, no little U's. It's a mixing together that brings us together, and it, it's called unity. Yes. With all of our differences, uh, with all of our gifts, all of our talents, it, we all come together, and we, it's called unity. Yes. It's the same in your own household. There's a mother, father, uh, children. All of you are different, but you make up this one unit. And in this one unit, if you all are, are headed somewhere in life, there is unity. Even with all of the differences that are in the family, unity is when we come together, you come together in your own household, in our own church, and in our own jobs, and come together on one accord, with one frame of mind, one reference here. Uh, and it, it creates this cohesion, this togetherness, this bond that uh, is unshakable. That's right. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is unity. Ingredients to unity. Paul opens our text in this first through the third verse and it reads like this. It says, Therefore, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. So that's the King James Version. He says, uh, what was that word? He says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. He gives us some things, some ingredients from these three verses to unity, having unity in our lives, in our own families, having unity in this church. Having unity wherever you go. You can have unity wherever you go. Here's something that Paul's going to help us to understand. 
Paul's going to help us to understand unity. He says to us that we need to pay attention to three things we're going to look at today. We're going to look at our attitude, our awareness, and our application. Our attitude, our awareness, and our application. We'll walk through as quick as we can this morning. He helps us to have three movements in this text. Our attitude, our awareness, and our application uh, in unity. Here's the first thing we see is our attitude in unity. Paul addresses our attitude in unity. That unity has an attitude. The attitude that we must have when it comes to unity is that he wants us to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unity is serious. <coughs> unity is serious. Yes. You want to look through all, even the Old Testament and the New Testament, one of the main things that God promoted and stood against he promoted unity and stood against disunity. Yes. He was serious about this because he knows that unity, God knows that unity, when God's people are unified, they can do anything, anything. according to his will. Yes. Yes. He needs unity. Unity is what gets things done. Not, it's not one person. It is uh, people coming together to unify with uh, one purpose in mind. They can get anything done. And so unity, he tells us, take seriously. He says, so I urge you. That's the seriousness of it. I urge you, he says. That's the seriousness of it. Here's what's so serious. Paul could say he urged, he could say it was seriously because of what it cost him. Did you notice how he started out? He said, I, Paul, a prisoner. A, I, Paul, a prisoner. Not just a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, when he says, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ, he means... Uh, Christ has captured my soul. He's arrested my soul, and, and I am His. And it's not in a negative way. He is. He's just saying, hey, I, I'm. I belong to God. When, when you're incarcerated, you you don't you don't belong to yourself. You belong to the state. If the truth be told, you you don't belong to yourself. They tell you when to get up. They tell you when to go to bed. They tell you when to eat. They tell you you, you know all those that have. Uh, been in. Okay, so you, he tells us we know you don't belong to your to yourself. Paul is saying the same thing. It cost him something. He says, my relationship makes me a prisoner, but really, I am a prisoner. Because while he's writing this letter, Paul is sitting in a prison cell, mm -hmm. talking to the church now in Ephesus about unity. He's sitting in prison, and he says, here's how serious this is. Unity is. I'm writing to you about unity, and I'm sitting in prison. This is how much it's costing me to tell you that you and I must walk in unity. Yeah. Not only does it cost Paul walking in unity, he's in prison, but it costs us. For the text says, he says this, he says, therefore I, prisoner of Lord Jesus Christ, urge you to walk worthy of the calling, yes. the vocation where you and I have been called. He says, here's, here's, here's where it costs me. I'm in prison, but it's going to cost you. It's, he says, you and I must walk in a worthy manner of this calling. What's the calling, Reverend? Well, the calling is to unity. God called us to unity. How? To be unified with Him, to be unified in the Son, be unified in the Spirit, to be unified with each other. God has called us to unity. It's serious business. Uh, Romans 5 1 says this Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. That's Unity. God says, I've sent Jesus to bring unity that we all might be in agreement together. Yes. Unity is this agreement. God, you don't even see, you see God, the Father. We're a Trinitarian church. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And 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 one text says, and these three are one. Reverend, don't don't worry about it. Just know that we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And though they are different, they are one. They are unified in mind. It's so interesting. Jesus says, he says, uh, when the Spirit comes, he's not even going to speak things of his own. He says, but he's going to say the things that I have or the Father has given him to say. There is unity in the Spirit. Yes. There's yes. unity yes. in the God here. They're not yes. fighting each yes. other. Yes. Nobody's battling for power. No, this no, is no. not gods of the titans. This no. is not, he, they, they all are unified together. Yes. And that's, how, that's just how serious it is. Unity from heaven. And he's saying he wants unity from us on earth. Yes. <coughs> unity costs something. Amen. It's serious. It he tells us to take it seriously. I urge you to take unity seriously. Yes. Yes. 
and in the in the in the in, when the children of Israel were crossing the uh, the desert, they would rise up. There came up a faction that that rose up, and they just could not stand leader Moses. Amen. They said, you know what? We hear from God too. Yeah. And they and they start, you know, hey, you know, it, causing all this kind of stuff and trouble and issue and 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 talking all this mess. And then one day, finally, it came to a head, and 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 a line had to be drawn. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's on Moses' side, yeah. you, you come over here. Right. Everybody who's on their side, you stay over there. And and some people honestly believe, honestly believe that if they would break up the bond, the unity, if they would get in the middle, if they would assert their authority, somehow they believe they would be honored enough for folks to respect them and they would be on top and they could bring the rest of the people together. Yeah. Well, when you're messing with God's business of unity, there's only one person who's going to control all that, who's going to deal with that. That's God himself. Amen. And you know what? Make, make a guess what happened. The Lord just stomped his foot and the earth opened up and swallowed everybody that was causing disunity. Because unity is serious business. It's serious business. That's why when you get married and, and, and this ring, the preacher may say, is an is a unending circle of unity. It's an unending circle. There's no break in this thing because that's how unity is supposed to be. It's a strong bond. Uh, even Corinthians talks about a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. It's Amen. unity that binds us all together. And he sees marriage and he sees unity in the church as serious business. Amen. And so that's our attitude. That should be our attitude, church, towards unity. I, it's serious. It should Amen. be taken seriously. Amen. Number two, notice this. Not only is our attitude uh, See our attitude in unity, but notice this, our awareness in unity. That we got to be aware of ourselves when it comes to this issue of unity. Here's some things, some ingredients here he gives us. Number one says take it seriously, right? That's our attitude. But number two, here's our awareness. He says four things in this text he tells us to pay attention to in verse two. He says, notice this. He says, so watch this. Walk in a worthy manner uh, as to your calling, which you've been called. With all humility, one, and gentleness, two, and with patience, three, bearing with one another in love, four. So I broke it down into four things. Listen, so he talks to us about humility, take, taking this gently, patiently, and lovingly. Humility, he tells us here in this issue of humility, humility in the context means for us to, listen, put Christ first. Yes. Put others second. Yes. And put self last. Amen. Reverend, now you, let me, because you're writing. I know you're writing. Let me say it again. Putting, put humility is putting, putting Christ first. Yeah. Putting others second. Yes. And putting self last. Amen. That goes against everything our culture is telling us That's today. Right. Amen. Completely against everything. How can you, you know, be good to other people unless you're good to yourself first? I, I get that. But there are many context, in many contexts where, where God is asking us, number one, to put his way first. Remember the text, Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all that you have need of will be added to you. Wait, wait, wait. If I go add to me first, then I can go seek his kingdom. That's not what he said. He said put Christ first. Then whatever I need will be added to me. You see, he's saying he's saying Christ first. But then here are others who are second. Because a part of following the righteousness of God is that you become others minded. That doesn't mean you are slave to what others think about you. That means you become a servant to others. Letting Christ use you to be a blessing to other people. And then yourself last. You have no worries at all. Christ, if I if I take care of God's business, God will take care of business. That's putting faith in the Lord that, listen, I know what they say, nice guys finish last. Listen, that's the terminology of the world. In God's kingdom, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. See, man, that's why you got to come to church and hear the word of God. Because God's word, I'm charged to preach God's word, and that means going against the culture. Right. So he says, here's this issue of humility that we put Christ first, others second, and self last. 
this issue of humility means knowing yourself, accepting yourself, and also being yourself. Right. When you, well, listen, when here's part of that humility is that you know yourself, you're accepting of who you are. You don't, listen, here's the whole, whole issue. He doesn't want us to try to be like somebody else because that's where this issue of pride comes in. The opposite of humility is pride. We want to be noticed. We want to. We want to be first. We want to be have somebody to 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 tell us how good we are, how good we look. We're the greatest thing since sliced bread. I mean, all those things we want to puff ourselves up. He says, "Listen, when you get into that this understanding that you need to know yourself, what's your makeup, who you are, what you can do, and what you cannot do." Amen. There are people who can do better things than me. Mm -hmm. I have no business getting jealous at their success. Yes. Yes. We've been gifted differently. We have Amen. different, different. we were born differently. Yes. We were raised differently. We, we have different IQs. Yes. We have, I mean, just all kinds of yes. things that make us different. Yes. He says, listen, we need to know ourselves and watch this. Then accept it. Accept the differences. Accept who you are. Accept your limitations. Accept what you can do and accept what you can't do. Yes. And then, and then, then once you've done that, you and I just y'all be yourself. Yes. That's right. Don't put up. Don't put on anybody. Don't try to fake it on anybody. Don't try to be something that you're not. Listen, when you're not trying to be something, we're not. It's an issue of pride in our heart. Yes. And so he says, listen. In order for unity, for us to be unified together, everybody gotta be themselves. Yes. If we try to be different people, there won't be unity because the you that I'm seeing every day is not the you that's at the house. That's right. That's right. Because on, we man. try to put on to make like we something that we're not. We don't listen. We don't get the real you. We don't get the real you. And that's what the, the, the world, our children, they need to see the real us. Amen. Not the people, listen, not the people we hope to be, but who we are. We are, who we are. Not, not who you wished you were. You know, we need to see who you are now. And I, I, I'm gonna tell you, if we can start living accepting who we are and being ourselves, you're gonna find peace in your own walk. Amen. Amen. Because it's a battle, man. It's a battle. Everything is pushing against you, telling you you need to do it the, the, this way. Everybody, it's like the culture saying the bar is right there. Mm -hmm. And everybody is supposed to come to that bar. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a problem. That's the problem. Because everybody is not gifted to get to the bar, that particular bar. Mm -hmm. and here it is. He tries to bring some completeness to us. He tells us that we should be ourselves. We should be humble enough to say, I don't know. Humble enough to say, uh, you know, I am who I am, and, and, and God's going to work on me. That's what humility does. That's an awareness of ourselves. He tells us to be humble. Yes. Uh, Romans, uh, Romans 12, 3 says, tells us uh, not to think of ourselves more than we are. And listen, he didn't say, don't think about yourself. Right. He did not say, don't have some, some, uh, uh, some pride about your, your life, how you carry yourself. But he is saying, don't think too much of yourself. Right. Soberly. Be, be, be soberly. Yeah, you, you're not the best thing that has, has ever happened to a woman. So he tells us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That should be, there should be some awareness in you. Yes, yes. Humility. But then there's gently. He says we should we should approach you, this issue of unity gently. He, he says gently. Meekness. That's what that word is. Maybe in your King James or New King James it says meekness. You may have meekness written there. It's 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 uh, meekness is could be defined as uh, strength under control. Right. Meekness is defined as strength under control. Yeah. Uh, meekness is not weakness. It's power under control. How do you know that? You know, the Bible said about Moses that Moses was the meekest man on the earth. Oh, you know, Mo Moses was weak. No, Moses was the meekest man, not the weakest man. Moses, did you, you, you remember? Uh, Moses was a bad man. He, he Don't get upset, but he did. He took somebody's life. Yeah. He wasn't weak. He was he was strong. He was raised in, in Pharaoh's house. He was a strong dude. He knew what he was talking about. He could do what he could do. He was not weak. He was just meek. He had power under control. Jesus said the same thing. Remember Matthew chapter 11, maybe verse 28, 29. He says, I take my yoke and learn of me for I am meek and lowly. So that, that, how many know Jesus is not weak? Amen. Amen. He was me. He was power yeah. under control. 
That's what it, that's what it means. Watch, watch this. Can Let's connect the dots. When you and I are gentle or, or we walk in meekness, that means you know something, but you ain't got to let everybody know you know something. Amen. That's true. That means, that means I know you know you're right, but you ain't got to be right all the time. That's right. That, 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 means, that means, listen, that means be humble enough when you don't know not to try to act like you do know. Yeah. That, that, that means gentleness means your meekness and, and whatever you don't know, watch this, you're teachable, you're open to learning something. That's right. You know, people who don't grow are people who are not meek. They think they know it and they're not open to learning something. How do you know? Because every time you talk, they talk. It's all about it. Every time you talk, they talk. You're not listening to me. You're not learning it. How do you know I ain't learning? Because you talk. You can't talk and learn at the same time. You got to be quiet and listen. It was so interesting. I heard a, a mother and her son going at it uh, not too long ago. They, was, they were having some disagreements, and the mother was saying something, and the son just would not stop talking. And, and I said to myself, I, I'm not going to say that. It's none of my business. But if that child knew... Listen, you can, you can change the situation and you can, and people can, when we try to defend ourselves, church, all the time, it show, it's a sign of weakness in us, yes. not meekness. Mm -hmm. When we calm ourselves down and, and, and realize, listen, you don't have to argue about everything. Sometimes people can prove your point. My granddad used to say to me, he said, son, just be quiet. People always tell you what you need to know. Amen. Yeah. Just be quiet. Yeah. 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 The things, the truth has a way of coming to the Amen. Yeah. Just be quiet. Chill out. You ain't got to worry about that. Listen, it, it's just a sign of meekness, power under control. You ain't got to fuss about everything. You don't have to bring everything to everybody's attention. You don't have to tell somebody they ain't doing it right. Give people an opportunity to fail and then get back up again. Amen. Amen. I'm here for 15 minutes. <laughs> let people fail. Let people let people grow. It's gentleness. Jesus, Jesus and Moses were that example. So that, he says unity should be approached gently. Here's another thing: patiently. That meekness should be approached patiently. That's the awareness that you and I must have about this. That we must approach it patiently. That word patiently means long suffering, maybe in your King James, or yeah. endurance. Or here's another word, long-tempered. That, that means it's the ability to endure discomfort, watch this, without fighting back, Amen. without getting even. It's ability to be in an issue with a brother or a sister, watch this, and you kind of hang in there with them while they're going through trying to get their self together without getting vengeful at them and responding to them because they're not responding the way you believe they should be responding. Amen. Amen. It's, a, it's a totally different mindset. It's not brushing folk off even though you want to. <laughs> even though it's on the tip of your tongue. It's not brushing people off and throwing them away because they, they're not meeting your expectation. It means taking time to slow down and be patient with somebody. Yes. Sometimes you got to endure a brother or a sister. Let me say it like this. So we get saved, you know, we come to church. Everybody that I've, I've learned this now, I, I really did. This, it took a while, but I got it. But everybody that come to Jesus, as much as I want them to, they don't bring their Bibles. They don't read their Bibles. They don't pray much. They Facebook a lot, but they don't pray much. They Instagram a lot, and they don't, they don't, they don't pray much. They come to church, they... Uh, uh, sex snap. No, I mean uh, chat snap. Snap. Chat. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. <laughs> the way it's going. There's not much, you don't see a lot of spirituality. Right. Now, in my mind, you know, you just want to, that's their problem. That's their problem. They won't be like that, that's their problem. But watch this. Part of my calling. And I believe unity in the body of Christ is not to throw people aside and say they ought to just get it, grow up and get it, but to stick there and stay there and do all I can to help them to get it. Mm -hmm. As as frustrated as I can be sometimes, you still have to be patient. Be patient, and you gotta endure with people. You know. You know, when somebody, when you had a not so good day in front of somebody at the supermarket or something, or somebody saw you stick your finger up, or somebody heard you cut somebody out, and then they say, I think they're 
go to Shepherd's Way. <laughs> Gotta endure with that. That's was that your member? No, it's not my member. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, it's my memory. Yes. 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 You have to be patient and endure and do it with them. As God is working with them to, for all of us to come into that unity. We get we get into that later in, in chapter four. I, all of us are growing up to mature in Christ Jesus. You have to deal with unity with patiently. Yes. All of us are not growing at the same speed. It Amen. takes it takes some time, and it's going to take some patience on our part, endeavoring with them and walking with them. And, and, and until God helps them out. Here's the last thing he shows us. Then he says lovingly. He says, here's what you need to be aware of also, is that unity requires love. He says, bearing with one another in love. That's the only way you can endure some of your people's, your loved ones, our church folks, our Christian brothers and sisters' foolishness is it's going to take love. Love is the foundation to this thing. Bearing with one another, it means to sustain. You're holding up, you're holding on with them, walking with them in their trial and tribulation. It takes love to get that thing to, to keep on walking with them. It takes love. Wanting to see them make it to heaven, that, that you, you got to have love in your heart. That's part of unity. God, give us that spirit of love in our hearts so that we can help everyone, all of God's people to unify together. Amen. It takes unity. It takes love and support. It takes walking with somebody, slowing down with somebody in their Christian journey. Someone who's sick. Sometimes you got to slow down with them and walk with them. As they, you say, well, you ought to have faith and believe. No, sometimes you just got to. You got to have faith for them. Amen. That's what love will do. Love will help you. Help you to watch this. Carry their burdens as well. Yeah. The Bible says that we all show art to bear the burdens of the weak. All right, last thing I want to show you. So we looked at our attitude and unity, our awareness and unity, and finally, here's our application in unity. It's verse 3, and we're done. Our application in unity is this. He says, eager, tell us to be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. The text says, uh, in other words, he says, uh, um, uh, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. He says, e he says we are, here's the application to, to unity, is eagerly. That we should, we should approach unity eagerly. It means for us to try. Mm -hmm. It means for us to put forth an effort. It means for us to really put forth an effort, watch this, to guard unity. Yes. And to maintain unity. Yes. You see why it says, see why we were talking that sometimes, that's why sometimes you had to put yourself last. Mm -hmm. because, because sometimes, you, you ever know you was right? And, and, and you you feel like I need to speak up and say something, but if you do, you know it's going to disrupt the unity because maybe it's not the right setting, it's not the right time, it's not it's not the right. It, it, let me give you free advice. Sometimes you got to wait to address the situation. Amen. And one of the times I know you probably shouldn't address it is when you boiling mad. I guarantee you it ain't going to come out right. Okay. And what you've been trying to hold back in your head ends up coming out of your mouth. Uh, when you when you emo when you're emotional and, and you, you just stuff that you you've been guarding yourself on, trying to make sure not that I think you're an idiot. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> but then when you get mad and your emotions are, are pushing, and then before you know it, you know in your head you thought you called him an idiot, but then you said you know you're not too smart, and they look at you just call me an idiot. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. Mean, it was already there. It just comes out. I'm just, I got a lot of witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. The truth. So the best thing to do. So the scripture says, "Don't let." We get to that too. Don't let the sun go down. Uh, uh, right. Okay. So listen. Sometimes that just simply means it might not be resolved that night. That's right. But here's where you need to have the resolution that we're gonna come back and address this later on to bring a resolution. Yes. Okay. Because if we keep going. One of us is going. <laughs> so, in order for that not to happen, let's let's put a pin on this, and I promise we can come back and talk about this when both of us have calmed down. He says, "Listen, unity. It, we have to approach it eagerly. You uh, here again. Here's what marriage is. Marriage is maintaining unity. Amen. Come on, I know I got a real name." <laughs> 
Ma ma in marriage, you have to maintain unity. You have to go into it with the mindset with, you know, I am not here. I'm not here to get all my needs met. It's not going to happen. If you think marriage is about getting all your needs met, you you're going to miss it. You you're going to have a miserable life. But if you can understand that sometimes, sometimes, listen, you've got to meet other needs, someone else's need, and then they meet your need. Listen, when you can understand that, man, marriage gets, gets better and better. Amen. It takes a little time, you know. When we move on, Rob. When we're young, when we're young, we're a little foolish. You know, when we're young, we're foolish. I, I'll be the first to admit it's all about us. But as you get older, you start realizing, you know, if I want something good, I gotta put in some. If I want to get back sweet, I gotta give something sweet. And then if you haven't figured it out yet why you keep getting all sour, you gotta ask yourself what you keep getting. It seems like I said this before. So he tells us, listen, to end, we have to endeavor to keep this unity. You got to work at it. Yes. You got to work at it. Yes. Those that have been married for a long time can say, Reverend, you're right. It's yes. work. Amen. It's work. Yeah. It's work. It's conquering. Right. <laughs> so here, I'm done. Here's the final thing to notice then. So he says we should approach it eagerly. But then here's the here's here's what ties it all, ties a bow around the whole deal and, and unifies everything. He says, approach it peacefully. Did you notice what he said about the peace? He said, Peace is the bond that keeps it all together. That's what he said in the text. He says, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. That means that peace is the glue that keeps unity together, Amen. keeps things unified. Amen. He says, if you are a peaceful person, promoting peace, walking in peace, you can, you can maintain unity. That's right. You can maintain unity. He says, notice, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit. It's the Spirit's unity. It's the Spirit who has unified all of us. I'm done. No, notice this last thing. The Spirit has unified all of us. When you get saved, Jesus, the Spirit baptizes us into Christ Jesus. We are now, we are now in the family of God. We're unified with God. But then also, we're baptized in the body of believers. Amen. That means there's a a Chinese brother in China who's my brother in Christ Amen. Jesus. We're baptized into a huge body of believers and we are all unified together in oneness. That's, that's why, watch this, when the trump of God shall call, he doesn't have to call everybody by name. No, because we've been unified when the trump of God shall sound, all of us who have been unified in the spirit, unified with each other, We'll be on our way up saying, hey, good to see you. I'm glad you made it. We're all going up to heaven together. Amen. Because that's what, unit, that's what the Spirit does. He brings unity. It's the Spirit's unity. So he says, so it's the Spirit's unity. So then notice, it's the saint's job to protect that unity with peace. I'm doing church. It's the Spirit's job. It's, our, it's the Spirit's job to unify us, but it's the, our job to protect all unity with peace. Are you the tornado in every storm? Are you the one causing the disunity in your own, whether marriage, household, your job, your family, whatever? You, you've got to ask yourself, you've got to ask yourself, well, I'm not getting my way. Well, that's an issue of maybe you got to deal with your humility. you got to deal with some gentleness. I'm not saying you don't address issues. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you've got to come to the grips that the best, the, the, Jesus said it like this, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's your house. That's any house. That's a principle from the Lord Jesus. It's right. in red. Check your Bible. Jesus said it. That unity is what keeps everything flowing well. And listen, that's how things get done. Amen. I'm done. That's how we're going to do it in this church. We have got to be unified. We must be unified, church. And we're going to get deeper into unity, what unity looks like from a church standpoint, what God is requiring of us in his house. Not so we can build some grand thing, but so we can do some great thing. God has a great work for us to do, but it takes unity. And when all of us have got a different agenda, when we are, I'm just here to get mine, kind of a mentality, church, that's not unity. I thank you for coming. But God wants us to do something after we've come together. Amen.
There's unity that must be built amongst us so that you and I can do what God will have us to do. We moved here for the sake of unity. Yes. We were in a terrible situation. And I felt like for months, I told my wife, uh, it was probably 2007. My grandfather was sick in the hospital. That's very good. And, and my grandfather was in the hospital. And I was talking with Dr. Covington, who, who preaches our um, anniversary service. And I kept saying to him, he said, I said, I call him Doc. I said, Doc, it's like I keep hearing in my heart. It's time for you to make your own waves now. I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand. I said, Doc, I don't understand why I'm, I'm feeling like this. And he says, you know, just trust God. Stay with God. Keep praying. Didn't realize God was calling me into something deeper. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize that whole time I was going through these different changes, God was trying to call me into a ministry. So watch this. So one day he would speak to me and say, I want you to keep my sheep together. Amen. Somebody asked me, well, what's your vision for the church? I, I just, here's the biggest thing. I knew that God told me to keep his people together. And when things got really haywire, the spirit of God, he kept speaking to me. And, and here's the other crazy uh, scripture that kept coming to me. He kept saying, greener pastures. I want you to lead them to greener pastures. Amen. I want you to lead them to a place of unity and peace beside the steel world. Why? Because when there is disunity, God's spirit cannot move. You remember what it was like. One of our men who was no longer with us, he would stand and watch the door to make sure unity would not be disrupted. That wasn't the way of God for us. And that's why we're here. That's why we're in this place. Because God is calling us to unity. And I pray you would receive that in your own life as well as in this ministry. Amen. Amen.